maybe the best way to describe it would be man on a mission, right? So I guess that's who I am. I actually work 24-7. It's work, but I love my work. Mm -hmm. It's also your emotional makeup. I tend to be guilt-ridden if I take too long a vacation or too long a break. But also, can you juggle time devoted to something else than, than work? And I don't think so. Hey guys, so this is a follow-up video based on a vlog that I created a few months ago where I had a chance along with Alodia, Wildasevich, Mary Bautista, and Chiquitan to have lunch with Manny Pangilinan along with other PLDT executives. And it was an amazing lunch where we got to share ideas with Manny Pangilinan and the entire executive team of PLDT. But above and beyond that, we were able to hear Manny Pangilinan's thoughts, ideas, techniques, strategies when it comes to life, when it comes to money, when it comes to investing. And if there's one thing that I've seen in a lot of business people, a lot of entrepreneurs that made it and that changed the game is that the way they think is so different. The way they think is contrary to what majority of people are thinking and the reason why I'm showing this video is that I hope that you see bits and pieces of how Manny Pangilinan thinks that you see bits and pieces of how Manny Pangilinan uh, does and conducts his his business the way he conducts his life because at the end of the day if you get something you get one idea from this I really believe that it will change your life so that while this is happening you get to absorb as much as you can and you get to use this you get to use one idea here that will change your business that will change your finances that will change your investing career and I do hope that this is something that you can run with and I do hope whatever he says from his life from his business from his investing principles is something that helps you so enjoy the rest of the video my, my task was to make a viral video somehow and lead it back to people um, I guess advocating you know something that the Philippines needs more of which is sustainability and kind of eco-friendly practices I started my YouTube channel two years ago so we have a group called Iponario group basically uh, the Iponario group is really uh, gaining traction uh, teaching people we have lots of testimonies from people, from students up to OFWs who save money, physical, physical savings. And they post it over the, over the Facebook to show their uh, success and progress. What was your first investment when you started, started out? Sa akin, no? it turns your personal investment. It flows from who you are. My particular circumstance is such that I don't have the time to do what you're doing. Right, because my time is devoted to running the businesses we own. My portfolio is really very simple. It's only two categories, bonds, and typically A up to AAA. Mm -hmm. So when I buy the bonds, I lock it away. And you know what? I put it in a blind trust. Mm -hmm. So it's no longer mine. Mm -hmm. Then I feel poor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I have to work harder. <laughs> <laughs> then the other bit, I do have stocks, but they're stocks of the companies we own. Sir, what's the biggest mistake that you have done that you should advise us? We speak about uh, turning digital, pivoting digital, but we didn't know what we were talking about, to be honest, until it hit us in the face. We were not prepared to take the pain. And we kept saying, produce the profits, produce 100% dividends. Take it on the chin now, in 2012, 2013, reduce the dividends because we need to invest in our future. Mm. What's your problem solving process? Three steps. Number one, admit there's a problem. Okay. Because if you don't admit there's a problem or you don't think there's a problem, then there is no problem. So remove step two and three. See, well, I have a problem. In the state of denial, I have a problem. After you admit, what do you do next? Develop your options. After you develop your options, these are my options to solve the problem. Step three, just do it. Wow. You don't know where, because decisions are always made at a particular point in time. You don't know when you made that decision, when you made that decision at that particular point in time, whether it was the right decision or not. Mm -hmm. You can have tons of advice that will tell you, you are right. 
you're probably right at that point in time. But in hindsight, it's only the facts, the realities post-decision that will confirm whether your decision was right or wrong. Will PLDD go into blockchain in the next few years? Definitely in, on a radar. I think our people take, certainly take a look at it. But you know, there are areas where the Filipinos are good at. But you, you have to ask, why aren't we in manufacturing? Why aren't we in industry? The first post-war the economic change was industrialization within Kachita. And then after that was the export boom, led by Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore. We were not part of that. It impacts on the economic structure, including the banking structure and the power industry. Because why should our plants be what they call the mid-merit, your ability to supply power at only certain hours of the day? Because we don't have a 24-7 situation where the plants require power 24-7. The only establishments that require 24-7 supply are two. Number one is the BPO industry, and number two are the casinos. That's why the power industry has got to accommodate the economic structure. That's why your power costs will be more expensive. Because if you have a huge industrial base, and most of our plants are base load, the power costs will drop. Number two, it affects also your distribution structure. Right now, 98% of our customers are residences, which means the investment in stringing along those lines to zillions of people is that much more expensive that you have more plants than, than people, right? at least in terms of consumption. And which means your system loss is higher because your lines are longer. In Clark Economic Zone, is about less than two, less than 3%. System loss of Meralco, they brought it down. It used to be eight plus percent. Where are we good at? Somebody should ask that. Yeah. Where should this country put its resources? Exactly. At this stage, those industries, those businesses that can produce jobs, number one, agriculture. Mm -hmm. By definition, labor intensive. Number two, tourism. Mm. And you know, we do that. It. We are very service oriented people. Sir, like philosophies. The, the, the ultimate test of our efficiency as a business goes beyond the profits you make. It is to be able to answer this question Are you improving the lives of your people? Because, you know, if you could produce the profits and at the same time, be able to tell yourself and your shareholders that we improve the lives of our people, then I think you've done an excellent job. More because of the latter, Diva. Right? If you would start today from from scratch, you were our age, what would you do? This generation uh, should take on more and more of the responsibilities of improving this country. I think we, I belong to the past already, no doubt about that, and I'm trying to uh, develop a succession so that hand, being able to hand over the future to to these younger generation of, of leaders, of corporate leaders. But I think the real digital leaders is probably a step away from, let's say if I hand it over to that layer who is older, I think we have to take that step before it gets handed over to somebody, to folks who are really digitally embedded like you guys, no? How many days a week do you spend on leisure or just having fun, not doing it? Maybe the best way to describe it would be man on a mission, right? So I guess that's who I am. I actually work 24-7. Mm. Uh, boss, boss, you watch basketball from time Yeah, you know, that's, yeah, sure. I watch <laughs> basketball, I play badminton whenever I can, but usually from 9 to 12. 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. and then if I need to get back to work, I will go back to work. And maybe most of the time I need to get back to work because of either the exigencies of the business or because my adrenaline is too high and I cannot go to sleep anyway. Mm. So I might as well tire myself out by doing one or two hours more. It's work, but I love my work. Mm. It's also your emotional makeup. I tend to be guilt-ridden if I take too long a vacation or too long a break. But also, can you juggle time devoted to something else than, than work? And I don't think so. Maybe I love my work too much that I cannot take myself away from it for a long time. I, in the past, 
when I was raised in Hong Kong, when people, one of the things that they managed to convince me was to take up skiing, snow skiing, Ooh. downhill skiing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we did. That's we would right. take right. seven days, ten days, but with the folks at the office. So we, we'd be working at night. Because <laughs> 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 you have to ski in at around four o'clock, it gets dark. I, I don't see myself as the usual uh, conventional person. So, Is it possible to be a big business owner and have businesses? without stress. No. No, yeah. And it's it's no. really part of the lead. As no. a business owner, you no. just have to accept that stress is really a big yeah. part of that. Yeah. To me, if you don't, then you don't consider the kind of business you own yeah. as valuable enough as uh, then you don't love it. You don't love your work really if you don't if you're not if you don't relate to it as closely as you should be. I keep saying this. This thing at the Godfather was that there's always a price you pay for the life you choose. Unless you know inherited what well, Different. I think you lead a different lifestyle. But those who built their, their empires, for most of us, all of us around this table, you, we're not members of the Lucky Sperm Club, are we? You have to work for your net worth. And you work very hard for it, Diva. Right? There will be many points in your life, in your journey, that you have to choose. And I will take this as an indicator about the values that drive you. Now, how does one deal with stress? That's where your faith, I think, comes in. Where else, sitting on top, who else do you turn to? Of course, you could turn to your colleagues to give you advice, but at the end of the day, the box stops with you, and where do you take comfort that, you know, should I do it or shouldn't I do it? Most of the time, you have to say, I cannot do it. But who gives you that kind of strength to say no? There's only one person, right? So you need that faith.